So I'll just go through kind of briefly a bit about bats and then we'll we'll walk and I've got some bat detectors and hopefully we'll uh, hear some bats. So so just just for an overview, um, there's about 970 species of bat in the world. They're around for 55 million years. So, or that's when they reckon they're around. So just to put that into context, um, we're around for about two million years. So they're doing pretty well. Um, so of the 970 species of bat, there's only three species that like blood. So they've got a bad name for no good reason. And they, none of those species live here. The only bats that we have here are insect eating bats. So we're not in danger at all. And they're all very friendly. Um, so basically most bats are small. All of the bats we get in Ireland, so there's nine species in Ireland, you can fit them in your hand. The smallest one, a pipistrelle, you can put it in a matchbox. It's that small, it can sit on the top of your finger. So, um, but you do get larger bats. You get ones that, um, the largest one weighs about a, this, the weight of a bag of sugar. And its wingspan is 1.7 meters, so that's about my height. So imagine me vertically, no, horizontally, with a bag of sugar in the middle, and that's so it's quite a big bat. But most of them are small. So there's the nine species in Ireland, and most of them are eating insects. Some eat fruit, some like um, nectar, um, and some eat fish, but only about a couple of species. Most of them, it's, it's insects and invertebrates. Um, so the, the, all of the species of bat, they come under the name Chiropteron, okay? So that's from the Greek Chiro or Chiros and Teron, which means hand wing, hand wing, yep. Yeah. Okay, so the reason for that is that a bat really is a little bit of ball of fur with wings that are made out of mostly very long fingers. So the bat wing has an elbow here and it has a little thumb up here and then its fingers extend all the way around here and it's got a big tough membrane of skin going down to its what would be our foot. So that's kind of like what a bat is. So we could really look quite similar to bats in some ways. So so that's the there's a little I've lost my diagram. So that's what a bat is basically. Very long fingers attached to the, the foot of the bat. Um, so, so, that, so the size of the bats that we have here, this is the Dobenton bat. So that's kind of the middle-sized bat that we have in Ireland. Um, I'll show you here. So these are our nine species. So you've got um, a Dobenton bat here. It's kind of middle size. The pipistrels here are the smallest of the bats. Okay, and this is a, a brown long ear. So it's got very large ears, but they all have. Uh, of very obvious ears. Um, so that's their, that's to give you an idea of size, that's the Dobenton and this is a Pipistrelle. Okay, and then in terms of weight, they weigh very little and the young of bats weigh even less. So a young bat weighs the size of, do you know a euro, a one euro coin? That would be the weight of a, a young bat. So a Dobenton's bat, put your hand out, <laughs> that's the weight of a Dobenton's bat. It's not very much is it? This one here, that would be the weight of a pipistrelle bat. Do not like to show them. So, okay, and you can see here all the different sizes. So the largest one has the wingspan of a swallow. So, and this is the smallest one up here. So they're they're all kind of a. None of them are particularly big. So, um, just in terms of uh, what they do. So, um, so the main thing that you associate with bats is nighttime and feeding. So they feed at nighttime basically because during the day, or what they think the adaptation is, that during the day you've got lots of birds feeding. So if bats come out at night, they've got no competition for feeding. So and they need lots of insects. So you get bats in areas like Brackling Wood where you've got trees, you've got water, you don't have um, improved grassland because there are very few insects there. So it's really important that we have our hedgerows and our woodlands and areas that aren't improved, that where pesticides aren't used, so that there's an abundance of insects. 
and then we've got uh, we, there's food for the bats. So they they need food to feed. They and in, a bat will eat three thousand insects. So that's fifteen insects a second. So they do a lot for insect control. Um, and they, then the other thing that they so they need to be able to feed, and then they need a place to rest. So during the day. They will go and roost, so daytime roost when it's light. They'll go and find a hole in a tree. They'll find maybe a bridge um, or the, a crevice in a, an old building. And, and they also use new buildings. They'll, they, you might find bats roosting in your attic. So they, so that's during the summer where they, so they, they're feeding all night, and then during the day they have to go and rest. So they lower their body temperature a little bit, they slow down their heart and they rest for the day. And in the winter, they hibernate. So do you know what hibernate is? Any of you young, bright kiddies? Do you know what hibernate is? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, they go to sleep for the winter. So they slow everything right down. Yeah, oh yeah. You take that with you. And throw it in the air, you might get a bat coming along. Okay? They'd love that. Yeah. <laughs> So they slow their, their heart rate from several hundred beats per minute to just about 10 or 20 and they bring their body temperature down from 37 degrees to, um, I think it's about 10 degrees, so very very low, it's a torpid state, so their metabolism is slowed right down and they require very little energy. But before they go into that torpid state they have to eat a lot, so, so now this time of year when the bats are out there feeding up. So they put on layers of fat for their hibernation. And the other thing that happens in this at this time of year is that they mate. Um, so the male and the female bat mates, but the female, she holds on to the sperm for all of the winter, and then fertilization happens in the spring, basically when conditions are better for raising her young. And the male bat does nothing to do with raising the young, isn't that dreadful? <laughs> he goes off and the female will raise just one young per year and they'll, they'll have nurseries where lots of female bats will gather together so they're, they're called nursery roosts and they'll um, keep their young there and then they'll feed themselves during the day and come back and feed their young. Um, so that was roosting. There was one more thing. Yeah. And then Bracklin. Okay, so Bracklin has six species of bat. So it's got the common species, which are, so you've got your common ones here, the Dobentons. So it likes the rivers. So, and they fly low to the river and they feed off the insects that are living on top of the river. So they can even fly, they can even fall into the river, grab an insect and then get out of the river. So they're very clever. So you've got Dobentons here, you've got Leislers, and you've got common pipistrelle and soprano. Okay, so the the other thing was how they um, how they get their prey at night time. Does anybody know? I'm sure you know. Do you know? No, I forgot. You've forgotten. Anyone know? Do you know what they do? Yeah. I seen something on TV yeah. where a bat caught a knot in its hole, and yeah. then wrapped around it with its wings and then started biting. Yeah. Great. A happy bat. Lots of dinner. <laughs> this that this is how they feed. Do you know what that might be? It's on the paper. That's it. Very good. Yeah, so they send out a signal. Um and so by sending out signals they get a picture. So it's like a sound picture of obstacles in their way and of prey. So they, once they get the signal back, they can get an idea of how far away it is, if it's moving away from them or towards them, and then they can get faster and faster and snatch their prey. So, so it's not that they can't see, it's just that they feed at night. So blind as a bat is actually not true, because they're not blind. <laughs> um, so they echolocate, and it was in the 50s that they, um, they found out about echolocation, and once they found out about echolocation, whole new world opened up in terms of learning about bats, which species are there and where they live and how many there are and is the population increasing or decreasing. Because once they knew about echolocation, 
they could develop um, bat detectors. So, so this is a bat detector. Uh, it's very simple. Basically, the bat sends out a, a short wave um, not sound at a frequency that we can't hear. And the, the detector converts the frequency to a sound that we can hear. So, and then they worked out which frequencies different species echolocate at. So the bats are quite clever. They echolocate at <coughs> different frequencies, and that means they can two species of bat can feed at the same time, but go after a different prey. So, so basically, you set your detector. So a pipistrel bat will feed at about 45 in our hearing at 45 kilohertz. So you just set your bat detector at that frequency, and then you have to point it up up into the sky and then you have to listen. Now you probably won't get one here because you'd be better into the forestry. So so that's so now with bat detectors and knowing the frequency that they uh, emit their signals we can find out an awful lot more about bats and if anybody is interested there is um, a lot of surveys these two here are Sorry, what was your name again? Mary and Mary. Corner, yeah. yeah, are doing um, some of the Bat Conservation Ireland surveys. They're, they're surveys for a different species of bat. So it's a, a really interesting thing to get involved in. Um, and just before we go, there's... I'll just play a sound of a bat so that you know, hopefully, when we hear one, that you've heard one. So this is a pipistrelle bat. So it does pops and slaps, it's called. So that's a common pipistrelle. And this is a dobenton. So it's very different, it's like a very much a fluttering. They've got a description of the different species of bat and the different types of sound that they make. And then the frequency that you'll detect each species. So if you were wanting to get involved in doing bat surveys, the information is there and all it takes is to go out and to listen. Um, and then you'll get your ear in and you'll be able to find out what's around your house or what's at your nearby river or woodland. <laughs>